Okay. Uh, F5, hello. F5, E3. Uh, we can get rid of all of... Th oh, no. <laughs> get rid of all that. It's going to be a player plane anyway, so I don't think it matters. We've got to make sure we got a nice livery. Always, always make sure you got a nice livery when you're testing. This one will do quite nicely. Uh, let's go... Aim 9P5. Aim 9P5. So we're... We're full internal fuel. And clean aside from two aim 9s, right? This is going to be us. Our first waypoint is a turning point. We're going to make it... Uh, let's give ourselves some ground clearance. We'll make it... 3,000 meters, so about 10,000 feet. Uh, we'll make our speed mark 0.8. Um, check weather. 20 degrees. Let's make it standard weather. Whoops. Okay. 15 degrees, 760 mils mercury. Uh, wind, nothing. Turbulence, nothing. Clouds don't matter. They're just a visual effect at the moment. Right, so this is our test. We're going to move the time of day a bit so the sun isn't fucking blinding. Let's fly. I'm going to open the telemetry bar for this, so pay attention to the bottom of the screen. Okay, telemetry bar. There we go. There you go, so you got my indicated airspeed and you've got my G. So we're doing about 450 knots indicated. Let's... So that was a fairly gradual onset. Remember this aircraft's symmetrical G limit is 7.33 at half fuel, or full fuel below a certain speed, but half fuel at any speed. Just burnt all our energy doing that. So let's dive for the ground a bit. Fifty knots. Nine point seven, nine point eight. I saw for a moment there. We sustained it. Wings are still attached. Four fifty knots again. Wings are still attached. You guys getting the point here? I'm just going to yeet my stick. That was me yeeting my stick. As hard as I could. Like, just instant full back stick. At least as hard as I could without either breaking it or pulling it off my desk. Let's build up some speed again. We're burning off fuel as we do this. Oh, I should probably balance my fuel. So we'll go full back stick again here. There we go, 11G. You see that? We spiked past 11, the wings went. Um, was it Shift R, I think, to reload the scenario? So now, let's get above 500 and let's pull. 9, 10. I sustained 10 for about a second, half a second, and it ripped. And that was at more than 500 knots with full internal fuel, which is exceeding the limits. The stated G limit for full internal fuel to aim 9s in the manual at speeds above Mark 0.9 or 9.5, I think it was, um, is 6.5. So let's, let's try again. Let's get some speed up. Okay. 
So that's Mark 1. 9.5, there we go. So at Mark 1, 9.5G, which is about where it should break, according to like a 150% safety factor, that's where it broke. So by adding that um, 1.5 times safety factor, which is about standard for aeronautical engineering, you get a figure of 11G from its normal 7.33 limit, and you get a figure of about 9.7 or so for its uh, lower limit when it's full fuel. Do a barrel roll, pull it over 500 knots, it probably will break then. Yeah, it, like, if you try and do a fucking barrel roll, full back stick, like, full back right stick, that was, at fucking 500 knots, yeah, you'll break it. That's probably what people are doing. So if I go, I'm at 450 now, full back left stick, kind of doesn't want to. 400, full back left, kind of doesn't want to. 450 and then we'll override the spring stops for full roll rate. Didn't break it. Four fifty override back right, there we go. It snapped. I wasn't I didn't see how much G that was on the uh, on the telemetry bar, but I mean you can pause the fucking stream and, and check it. Around night, it's well past its limit. That is well past its fucking limit. The rolling limit is like 5.2. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I told you, Chief, it ain't broken. A little unforgiving, maybe. Uh, you'd probably bend the fuselage before you rip the wings off, or bend the wings but not rip them off, but it ain't broken. It's people's flying habits that are broken. Look at that. Eight, nine. We did lose it there. Okay, I didn't see what it ripped at. Let's see. Let's get the speed up. Negative G is really bad for airframes, by the way. I don't know if DCS actually simulates that, though. I haven't noticed. Okay, 600, so that's around Mark 1. Let's watch the wings. 7, 8, 9, 9.8. That was a gradual pull, though. That wasn't a rip. Like, I didn't yeet the stick into my guts. We pointed up? Yes, we pointed up. Big sleep. <laughs> hey, Seal. Okay, here we go. Let's do another gentle, like a, or like a slow onset pull. 600. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Went at 9. And that was at Mark 1, full fuel. But let's try below 500, right? Let's try below 500 knots. And see. I'm holding my stick base on my desk. Yeet. Oh. 10.5, nothing happened. Let's uh, get the nose down for airspeed again. Sleepy time part of optimal BFM. Yeah, clearly. Only the pros know the importance of sleepy time. Okay, 450. Wings still attached. There it goes. On the third pull as we exceeded 8.5G. I rest my case, there's nothing wrong with it. There's <laughs> absolutely nothing fucking wrong with it. Um, so, there are certain like situations I've seen clips of that I, I can't explain. So Tricker, for instance, he showed me a TAC view and it had him at like 3 point something or 4 point something pull. The issue is TAC view is really bad at recording this because TAC view um, samples data at too low of a rate to be reliable for, for rapid onset G pulls. 
um, and this caused a whole drama in Folds of Honor last year, uh, as those of you who were present would remember. So, attack view is heavily affected by netcode, it's heavily affected by PC performance, it's heavily affected by a low uh, data sampling rate. It will try and tween data between samples, so if it has a good sample, then lag, and then a good sample, it will spike the G, like, unnaturally. That's what happened with the whole um, White Lion low blow drama, is White Lion had a lag spike on his client attack view, and it, it tweened low blow through, like, fucking 11G or something, when low blow never pulled more than 9. Um, or 9.3, I think it was. So, TacView is not reliable for this shit, unfortunately. It's just not. Um, I haven't seen an actual track file. I don't, actually, have I? I don't remember. I don't remember if he sent me one. I don't think I saw one. Um, but anyway, suffice to say, um, I saw the clip and it didn't look like he was pulling very hard, but at the same time, it, it never does in the F5. Like, you can pull really hard without noticing it. Um, I'll just reload this. Like, this is the issue with the F5. So, when you're flying BFM, this, this is really important, but it's down by your knee and you're usually looking up here. Likewise, this is really important and it's buried all the way down here. This is one of the nice things about the MiG-21. Both of those instruments are up by your gun sight, so you can look straight ahead and still know, oh, I'm within my G limits or whatever, although the 21 doesn't matter as much because the ARU helps you out. Same with the MiG-19. Whereas with the F5, you're not looking down at your knee, you're looking up. And I've, I've noticed some people will glance down at the G meter now. I don't. I, I glance at it when I'm done fighting to see how much I pull. But, like, I can still fight as normal and it's not an issue for me. I have never, I'm, I'm not kidding, I have not once ripped my wings in an actual dogfight since they added this this feature. I've done it in testing, obviously, like I just did there. I can do it deliberately. I cannot reproduce it by accident. I cannot do it. And I have tried. So if we pull here, that'll do it. I had the fucking stick override on rolling at maximum rate, or at least what my um, saturation settings on my stick will let me do, and then I pulled. You're not supposed to, like, that, that is not good for the jet, you do not do that. And I don't... Actually, I do. I know exactly what situation you would do that. So I bet you anything, the majority of cases where somebody has this happen are going to be missile evasions, guns defense, or trying to force an overshoot, and I say this because my number one go-to maneuver in the Mirage to force an overshoot, and this is Saviour's one too, which is probably why people complain so much when he rubber bands around, because this will, like, that causes the rubber banding in the Mirage. Um, and I think most modules in certain uh, situations. My go-to defense in the Mirage was full back stick over to one side, and you just do, like, high-speed barrel rolls. Nobody's gonna hit you. I almost spun it. Oh, because I ripped the wing. Um, yeah, you'll do it then. So, don't do that, I guess. Like, that would that would fuck both you and the jet up in real life. Don't do it. Like, at fucking 500 knots. But look, this is... This is about... Let me open the controls input. This is... This is enough. This is enough to get someone to overshoot you. You don't need this, right? It's just not necessary. You certainly don't fucking need this. It's not going to rip now because I'm low enough speed, but you get my point? Like, and you can see when I hold that override, the, um, the roll limits almost double. You really, really do not need more than this. And this is fine. This is within limits. G, 5.2. We're within limits. You really, really don't. Like, I, I don't get it. I really don't. What I think the problem is, is so many people have flown the F5 with no G limits on it for so long that they've developed the habit of just pulling the stick. Like, it's if. I, I don't think they're doing it deliberately. I don't think they're exploiting anything or, or whatever. It's muscle memory, right? Floyd! <laughs> Cheers for the resub, man. Um. Yeah, like, it's it's muscle memory, it happens, right? It's the same reason why when over-G damage was added to the MiG-21, I would rip my wings in mergers because I just go vertical, full-back stick, and the ARU can't compensate for that once you cross a certain speed range, so I would rip my wings going vertical and go, oh, fuck, well, now what? Same thing, you just got to adapt to it. And number one fucking step to ad adapting to it is not flying around on the deck at 600 knots pulling full stick deflection in any direction. 
Uh, I did it deliberately, yes. I did not do it during actual combat. Like, look at this. This is... This is well within the aircraft's G limits, and this is all you need in a dogfight. You know? Like... Why would you need more than this? I don't understand it. Which I... Yeah, really. 517th, Whiskey Tango, Foxtrot. <laughs> Cheers for the follow. Appreciate it. But yeah, I, I, like, I know, I don't want to sound like, oh, this bad, F like, these guys are good pilots. Like, a lot of the guys having issues with it are not bad pilots in the F5. They got a lot more experience in it than me. I just think that over time they've developed a bad habit without realizing it, and now they're being punished for it. And their, their natural sort of conclusion is, it can't be me that's wrong, it's the plane that's wrong. Which is, you know, the kind of conclusion I've arrived at at various times with the MiG-21 until I pulled my head out of my ass. Um, but I, I don't think it's deliberate, I don't think there's any malice to it, whatever. I just think that they'll have to adjust to it over time. Uh, I doubt ED will revert this change because there's no reason to, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, people are going to have to learn. Simple as that. If I can rip my wings in the MiG-21 when the, uh, the ARU can't keep up with what I'm doing, F5 pilots are going to have to learn the same thing. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. You know, this should have been implemented years ago. Really? This this should have been implemented years ago, and then there wouldn't be a problem, because they wouldn't develop the bad habits. How many Gs did it take to break? So, at this speed, about 9 will do it. 9 point something will do it. At below 500 knots, or at 600, about 9 will do it. Um, at 500, 9.7-ish, which is what it should be, 9.7, 9.8. Um, and then below 500, like, more than 10. We just spiked over 10, wings still attached. We're not going that fast, so that wasn't a very big pull. There we go. Ten point something we lost the left wing after we'd already pulled 10G once. Like, it's... No. I, I don't think it's an issue. Um, I think they're just going to have to adjust to it. So, what I'll do to show you is let me switch this out for uh, a MiG-21. I'll do it in the 19 as well. So, grab our MiG-21. We'll, of course, grab our personal livery, which I usually fly with. That one will stick. I don't know. What do we got? Uh, Dogfight. We'll get rid of the belly tank. So we're just two R13Ms. <coughs> or M1s. We're full internal fuel. The F5, by the way, um, with half fuel, that, so that was with full internal, right? With half fuel, that limit expands more, so you can literally pull like 11.5G about five times before a wing rips. Symmetrically, of course. Um, I'm not going to go back and demo that. I don't think there's much point. I think the point's been made. But if you want to test it yourself, 2,200 pounds fuel or less, um, and just without adding any roll, just pull the stick see how many times you can pass 11 before the wings fall off. So anyway, here's our MiG-21. Uh, we will start at same parameters, same weather, same everything else. So we're going to actually pick up speed here, because what I want to demonstrate requires some speed. I'm going to turn on the lighting. Although we're in full sun, so it doesn't really matter, I guess. So I'm coming into a merge, I'm doing, say, 900 kilometers an hour indicated, and I pull vertical, full back stick. Oh, that time... oh, there we go. That was a stall, actually. Might need to be a little faster. We're doing science, Gilson. So let's go back down, let's get our speed back up. A little sloppy with the flying, but I'm just trying to demonstrate something here. It's not really a... Not an air show routine.
1,000 kilometers an hour. Full back stick, the ARU will shit itself. Huh. Okay, we're getting lucky today. Next pull should probably do it, though, because it accrues over time. So you make one 10G pull, and the next one will probably break you. You know what? I've developed the habit of not eating the stick anymore. That's what it is. Uh, over the time of however long it's been since I added uh, wing damage, so make 21 from over G, I've developed the habit of not eating the stick. But there we go. There goes the wing. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's, it's around 11G, but it does accumulate over time, so if you break it, like if you go above the limit once, and it doesn't break, um, the next time you get close to the limit it'll break. I think that's how Hero explained it. So again, let's get some speed, get up to about a 1000 or 1100, and we'll just pull the stick as quickly as I can. There's a 1000, full back stick. So that's not quite enough, it's 1100 you need. About 1100. Try not to hit the ground. Right, 1100. Full back stick. There goes the wing. So, the MiG-21 has a limiter system, the ARU, Automaticzki uh, Regulator Upravlenie, Automatic Control Regulator. And what that does is it allows the aircraft to regulate the amount of tail deflection for a given speed and altitude. I will pause the game here once I get the nose roughly level. Hello. There we go. Okay, game's paused. This is the ARU gauge. You'll notice the top scale and the inside scale go in different directions. The outer scale at the top is airspeed times a thousand kilometers an hour. The inner scale is altitude in kilometers. And the position of this needle tells you what mode the ARU is operating in. She's a bit Nixon. Um, when it's fully left, you have full control authority. Um, that's its low speed or landing mode. When it's fully right, it's in its high speed mode, which is the most limited mode it can give you. So what we're going to do is, this is an automatic system, you never touch this. Like, the only time you'd fuck with this in the real plane is as an emergency procedure. This is, this is here for two reasons. Am I not paused? I'm not paused. Is that an, oh, because I hit the wrong fucking button. Big brain. <laughs> um, the only time you would override this is for an emergency. Um, this is an automatic thing, the plane looks after itself. It's here to stop you from two things. One is pilot-induced oscillation, the other one is overloading the aircraft. The controls for it are down here. This is the automatic and manual switch. This is the mode switch. This is like a spring-loaded dobber switch. Up is, uh, is long arm, down is short arm, I think. Or actually, no, that's speed. So this is, this is uh, high speed, this is low speed, I think. We'll see when we start fucking with it anyway. So I'm gonna put the aircraft in autopilot. We'll let it stabilize itself here. So you can see now, because I'm at 800 kilometers an hour indicated airspeed, and four kilometers altitude, the needle is a little below the 800, because I'm, I'm kind of, you know... I wonder. I actually wonder if it's not scheduling correctly, because it should actually, by rights, be pushed all the way over at the moment. Interesting. I'll have to look up how this is scheduled. It's a very complex mathematical relationship, which is beyond my ability to, to work out on the fly. Uh, there's, like, tables and shit for this thing, but I need to double-check it. Anyway, you can see what I mean, though. Like, I'm now at 900 kilometers an hour indicated airspeed, just below four kilometers, and it's all the way over. I have minimum stick authority at the moment. If I was to slow right down to landing speed, or if I was to climb to very high altitude where the air is thinner, it would start moving left. What we're going to do is we're going to go, ooh, manual mode. Then I can do this. Now the fun really starts because at this speed I can disengage the autopilot. Look how twitchy the nose becomes, and I can do this. That's, I'm moving the stick, like, almost not at all. 
to show you how much control authority I now have. Let's accelerate to 900. Let's pull the stick like one third back. And I'm able to pull like 6G and nearly stall the aircraft. True airspeed, yeah, you're actually probably right. That's probably what it's scheduling off of. I have the dum dum. Yeah, I'm in F5 mode now, basically. The F5 has a, um, like a stab, a stab org, which helps damp out these oscillations, but it doesn't limit your control authority. There goes the wing. That's why you don't fuck with the ARU. That's why it's an automatic system. Uh, the MiG-19 will do the exact same thing, so we'll grab the 19. Actually, no, what I'll do... I won't do it now, but, um... I think in the, in the MiG-21 Academy video I did, which is on YouTube if you guys haven't seen it, it's like eight hours of me spurging the fuck out about the MiG-21. Um, in that, there should be a timestamp where I demonstrate the ARU stick deflection differences, like how much tail deflection you get at, at maximum and minimum settings on the ARU. It's pretty substantial. It's like a five or ten degree difference in deflection. Um, all Mikoyan fighters after the MiG-19, including the MiG-19, have this. Uh, by the MiG-29, it was integrated with other stuff like an angle of attack limiter and a few other things, but at its core, the aircraft is limited in how much stick deflection, or how much tail deflection rather, it gives you per stick deflection um, to stop you from breaking the plane and or yourself, right? So this is an automated, uh, automated system on all Mikoyan fighters of this vintage. The MiG-23 has it as well. Um, the F5 doesn't. I don't think the Phantom has something comparable. I'm pretty sure the Crusader doesn't. The F15 has a warning system, but it won't actually restrict you from pulling. Um, it's not really until you get to the fly-by-wire aircraft that the American jets will stop you from pulling this hard. Um, as far as I know, there might have been one with a, a, some sort of scheduler system, but as far as I know, that they didn't do that until they got fly-by-wire. The Vigan has something comparable. I don't know how effective the Vigans is because I don't generally pull the stick that hard in it, but um, I know it has something similar to the ARU and you'll notice it once you cross certain speeds in the Vigan as you're pulling the stick, you'll notice it kind of kick its nose upwards as it gives you that little bit more authority. So we'll grab the 19 and I'll show you the exact same thing. We'll, we'll uh, grab the same loadout to air to air missiles just to, for the sake of completeness, I guess. Let's go. What happens when the needles move all the way to the right? You get very little stick authority. Um, it won't turn very well, even at low speed. So here we go on the MiG-19. Again, we have an ARU, so I'm going to put on some burner, get the speed up, and then we're going to pull all the way back. First we'll do it gradually, then we'll just eat the stick, and we'll see what happens. This will rip, for the same reason as the 21, the AR you can't always keep up with your inputs. Okay, we're just about to go supersonic. There's the sound barrier, you see the variometer go crazy. Gentle pull, the ARU is limiting us, we cannot pull more than 8G, which is this aircraft's limit. The ARU will not let us pull more than HG. By the way, missiles are still attached because uh, that happened ages ago. Razbam uh, found the actual documents for those things instead of having to guess, and they found out that they were very conservative with their guess at the G limit. It's not 6G like it used to be, it's actually 8. Um, well, a little over 8. So you won't rip your missiles unless you also rip your plane now in the MiG 19. Just a, a handy hint there for those that haven't played it for a while. Air to ground stores and tanks will rip, but the air to air missiles won't until the point where you're already ripping your wings. Okay, now we're gonna eat the stick. There we go. We are now missing a wing. Same thing, has an ARU. It's almost exactly the same system that I think the scheduling's slightly different, but it's basically the same system. So we'll pick up the speed. Uh, there's the automatic manual, and then we will. There's the gauge. So we'll go full manual, we're at reasonably high speed, it becomes much twitchier, kind of like the 21 is. 
I gotta be careful rolling at this speed too, because at 19 loses its ailerons from sudden roll inputs around uh, Transonic. I'm not pulling my stick very hard to do this, by the way. Like, look how little I'm pulling my stick, and look at the amount of nose authority I'm getting from it at this speed. Like, the G loading it will give me in this mode with half stick deflection is nearly enough to break the plane. Uh, wing tanks are about 4 or 6G, I can't remember which. Outer ground stores are about 6, but the missiles are 8 or more. It's slightly above 8, I think. It's like 9. We'll see here in a minute if we don't rip the wing first. Yep, there goes 1, there goes 2. And that was 9G we pulled just there. So if I slow right down, and we'll move the ARU the other way, into the high speed mode. I'll slow right down. We're out of burner, we got the air brakes out. Now watch how much control authority I have here at 600 kilometers an hour. Fuck all. I can't pull to save my life. You think the MiG-19's got bad nose authority normally? It's even worse with this set manually. And in fact, if I go down to my landing speed, or close to my landing speed, it'll be even worse, which is why if there's an ARU failure and it doesn't go into the landing mode, that's an emergency procedure to manually set it. That's why there's a manual switch for the ARU, so if it doesn't go to fucking low speed mode for landing, you can set it manually. Or if it goes to low speed mode while you're supersonic, you can quickly set it. Because otherwise you're going to have a very bad day. So we'll call it about 400. No nose authority whatsoever. 